Let me tell you a story. I'm going to close with this. This is my favorite story about dreams that I've ever heard. I, I heard it told by Jack Hiles. Jack Hiles is a pastor, and he said that many years ago when he was in Bible college, he attended a Bible college, a small Bible college in East Texas, and he said not everybody was there to study preaching, but most of them were. So he said all of the, the guys who were there to study to be preachers all sort of hung out with each other and spent time together. And he said one day he saw a new guy coming across the campus and he'd never seen him before. And so he said I walked up to him to introduce myself and find out who he was and what his major was going to be. And he said I walked up and introduced myself. I said, hi, my name's Jack. What's your name? He said, my name is Yo. He said, excuse me? My name is Yo. He said, you see, Joe has a speech impediment. Life had not been fair to him. But life's not fair to anyone. But it was very obvious that life had not been fair to him. So Joe talked to Jack for a moment, and Jack asked him, he said, I just felt sure he wasn't there to study to be a preacher. I mean, if you have a speech impediment like that, surely he was not there to study to be a preacher. So he said, I asked him, Joe, what are you here to study? I'm hunting for a ministry. I'm on my friend here. He said, I just could not believe what I had just heard. He said, and I went back to the dorm and I told all my buddies. He said, I know it was ugly and I shouldn't have made fun of him and God wasn't proud of it. God was ashamed of me, but I went back to the dorm room and then I said, hey, there's this guy named Joe and Joe's going to be a preacher. He's hunting for a ministry. He said, I'd take him and introduce him to guys. Hey, Joe, tell him what you study for. I'm hunting for a ministry. Tell him what you're going to be, Joe. I'm going to be a preacher. He said, and we made so much fun of Joe behind his back all the time. When Joe wasn't around, we'd be walking up to him. My name's Joe. I'm hunting for a ministry. I'm going to be a preacher. He said, it was ugly. God wasn't proud of it, but we did it, and I'm admitting that we did it. He said, well, one day we were all standing there talking to each other, and he said, you know, on every college campus, there's always one girl who is like the most beautiful, exquisite creation on the campus. And he said, this gorgeous girl walked across the campus, you know, and all the preacher boys are just standing there, you know, just thanking God for sight, you know, and... <laughs> He said, as she walks by, and all of us, you know, they were wiping their tan, you know, and he said, all of a sudden, Joe pipes up, said, you know what I'm going to do? He said, yeah, you're going to be a preacher, Joe, that one you're going to do. He said, that's not all either, I'm going to marry with her. He said, Joe, I don't believe I heard what you just said. Please tell me again that you think you're going to marry the most beautiful girl on campus, the girl that all the rest of us are even afraid to ask out for. That you got that one. That is that, that, what I said. I said, I'm going to be a and I'm going to marry with her. Oh, they laughed and laughed and laughed at Joe. Joe going to be a preacher. Joe going to marry the most beautiful girl on campus. So Joe didn't say another word to him. Learn from that. He didn't say another word to him. Weeks went by. And one day, Joe came up to Jack and told him that he was ready to ask her for a date. Tomorrow afternoon, 2 o'clock, she gets out of a certain class. She walks across the, the campus from that building, and she always walks right past where they have all the flowers and trees and bushes out by the park benches in the middle of the campus, and he's going to be waiting right there to ask her for a date. So Jack did the Christian thing. He went back to the dorm, told all his preacher friends, Hey, buddy! You want to watch Joe make a fool out of himself tomorrow afternoon? Too. Don't you know God was proud? But anyway, tomorrow afternoon, 2 o'clock, be out there. Joe's going to ask her for a date. So quarter to two, all the preacher boys huddled in the bushes. They're waiting. Does anybody relate to this? They're waiting. About 10 minutes to two, Joe has no idea they're in the bushes. He's, he walks along there. All spiffed up, really looking sharp, got his hair slicked back, his heart's starting to pound a little bit. Squirts a little sweet shot in his mouth. <laughs> He's ready. And all of a sudden the door opens and there she comes. Oh. She almost floated across the camp. Oh, she was so his heart's just a going, man. I mean, just a pumping like crazy. <laughs> 
His hands are starting to sweat a little bit. She walk, his mouth's getting dry. She walks up. She says, well, hi, Joe. He bows real graciously. Smiles, throws out his chest, pulls those shoulders back. And he said, may I please have a date with you? He said, Joe, is that you? <laughs> well, would you mind saying that again? He smiled real big. Put those shoulders back. He said, may I please have a date with you? As all the preacher boys fainted in the bushes. <laughs> she said, Joe, have you been practicing? Have you been practicing just so you could ask me for a date? You see, what she didn't know and what the preacher boys didn't know was that Joe had a dream. And Joe wasn't lazy. And if you have a dream and if you're not lazy, you can do it. And Joe didn't let people steal his dreams. They made fun of him to his face. They made fun of him behind his back, but he stopped listening to them. He said, if they're not going to encourage me, I'll encourage myself. I'm not going to listen to all that negative talk. And Joe didn't let life steal his dream. You want to talk about feeling sorry for yourself because of what life's done to you? Life hasn't been fair to me, but I certainly can't complain to Joe because Joe's had much worse things happen to him in his life. But Joe didn't let life's deformity in his speech prevent him from achieving his dream. And the third thing Joe didn't allow to steal his dream was time. Joe said, I'm going to pay the price. I'm going to take the time. It may take me longer than it would take somebody else to achieve my dreams, but I'm willing to pay the price so I can play later. <laughs> Joe stood in front of a mirror in his dormitory for hour after hour, day after day, week after week, practicing. May I please have a day with you? May I please have a day with you? And he practiced for hour after hour after hour. While all of his buddies are out having a good time, while they're all out having milkshakes and pizzas and playing football and everything else, he's practicing over and over and over and over and over and over till he could finally say it right. And she says, Joe, have you been practicing just so you could ask me for a date? And Joe smiled real big. He said, I don't have for week, down week, down week, down week. I've been practicing it, I've practicing it, I've practicing it, I've practicing it. Because that was the only thing he had learned how to say, was may I please have a date with you? But the good news is, she said, Joe, yes, anybody who will work that hard to ask me for a date, yes, you can have a date with me. And today, Joe is married to the most beautiful girl on campus, and he's a preacher. Don't let anything steal your...